Hello everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to do some live streaming to a Rails application. This is the first video in probably a couple that I'll do on this topic, maybe not all at once. Uh, but in this first one, what I want to do is just give you a way to, uh, from let's say like uh, OBS, which is the software I use to record these videos, to record something, whether that's your screen or an in-person interview or something to that effect, and then broadcast that to your website. In this case, I'm not streaming, but if I were, this would then be going from OBS to Amazon, and then my web app will be watching Amazon and playing that video that it receives. We'll take a look at this in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and try to start streaming here. I'll say yes, and hopefully this will work. This should then get kicked over. I'm gonna move this over to the side. This should get kicked over to Amazon. And then from Amazon, I'll hopefully be able to see that my status changes here, my, or my state. Uh, it should change to online. This usually takes a couple seconds because there is some delay here. I also probably need to refresh. Uh, and then we can see this is now online and I'm now looking at my playback, et cetera. And then we can come over here to the Rails application that I hopefully have running and we can see the same thing right here. Now, of course, it looks a little weird because it's it's playing me looking at my Rails app stream, which is playing my Rails app stream, which is going on and on and on infinitely. But hopefully you get the idea. So that's sort of what we're going to be setting up here. It's just going to be a way for you to stream something to maybe the homepage of your website. In a future video, we can take a look at uh, at implementing chat and then maybe we can take a look at what I have right here which is instead of streaming to one individual page, you give each user their own stream, which is where you start to move more towards creating like a kick or a Twitch competitor as opposed to uh, just your own solution. Okay, but that's enough of an intro. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at how to actually do this. So if we want to, if we want to start, we're going to have to go over to the Amazon IVS page. You can go to Google and go to uh, Amazon Interactive Video Service. If you're interested in the pricing, they'll have it somewhere on here. Uh, there's, you know, the first hit's always free. That's something to be aware of. That does mean you're getting very limited numbers of uh, hours of video as well as messages. These seem like very big numbers, but you have to remember some of the like, more medium sized uh, self sustaining Twitch streamers, for example, go from like one to 5,000 viewers at a time. Uh, and if you're talking participant hours, uh, a thousand viewers watching for an hour is a thousand participant hours, which is not a hundred hours, right? So in that point, you're already being uh, priced out of the free tier. Now you're not gonna get a thousand viewers, obviously, if it was that easy, we would all be doing it. Uh, but you can come here and you can scroll through. It is gonna vary based on region. So you might, you're gonna wanna check your region to see what your full HD price is. In some cases, it's it's similar. In some cases, you're paying a lot more. And in some cases you're paying a lot less, but you can see here, like in South Korea, for example, we're looking at 25 cents per uh, first thousand hours of delivered content. So this is the content being delivered to your viewers uh, is gonna be like 25 cents per 10,000. If we come over to North America, it's only 14 cents. So you get the idea. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff here. It's gonna depend on which way you're doing this. Uh, but you're gonna go ahead and you're just going to get started, sign in, create an account. And then that should hopefully take you to, uh, if I come over here, the uh, low latency option. And then once you get to the low latency option, we can then go ahead and create a channel. From here, we can name this channel, whatever we would like. I'm gonna call mine Deenan underscore uh, video underscore demo, I guess. And then we can go with the default configuration. Uh, and then we should be good to go. You can also auto record to S3. If you wanna save these videos as like video on demands or VODs to your S3 storage, you can do that. That's probably gonna have an additional overhead. So you're gonna wanna be aware of that. Uh, and then there's also other options you can go through, which will allow you to change what type of content you're allowing. In my case, I'm doing 1080p, which is like low HD. It's, it's considered full HD, but it's not like the top of the line, uh, but it's expensive enough. Uh, and then you can also go through uh, some of the permissions, depending on how you set this up. You can make it so that only like subscribers can can watch your stuff. But OK, this is going to give us some uh, information here, including an ARN, which we're going to take a look at in a future video. I don't think we need it for this one. But if we scroll down, we get a stream key, an ingest server and a playback URL. And those are kind of the key components. So let's go ahead. Let's set up the Rails app first, and then we'll deal with the stream key and the ingest server. Cause that's kind of like the least familiar thing I'm expecting for a lot of people. 
So for this, I'm just going to CD. Uh, oops, I'm going to CD into my project or into my uh, folder IVS. There we go. And I'm going to do a Rails new video. For this one, I'm only going to do the video in the future ones. Uh, for this one, I'm only going to use uh, import maps. In the future ones, we're going to be using ES Build just because things are going to scale up a bit, and uh, import maps and me tend to not get along very well. But for this one, because we're really only using one page, uh, we should hopefully be fine to just run this. So let's CD into the video, run a code dot, open this up in VS Code. Let me make sure I don't stop the OBS recording when I stop streaming over here. Uh, and then we can come over and take a look at this. So we're going to move this over here. I'm going to open up my notes because they need to be visible for me to do this so I can pretend to know how to do my job. Okay, so let's start by doing a home page. We'll say Rails G controller pages home, something like this. And then we can, uh, if you want to, you can do something else like a scaffold for, I don't know, a, uh, a post with a title and a body of type text. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. Let's go ahead and let's run a Rails S and go over to localhost port 3000 just to do a sanity check, make sure everything's working. I'll run my migrations for those posts. Uh, and then we can come over to our config and our routes.rb. Okay, in our routes, we're gonna set the root to be our pages controller home action. We also have our posts. The reason why I wanted to use the posts was because we've covered using like turbo frames before on the channel. Uh, if you have a live stream like this, Sometimes viewers might want to like continue watching it across multiple pages. In that case, you might want to consider putting the entire thing we're about to do inside of a turbo frame so that you can run it across multiple pages without, uh, you know, the us users not being able to continue watching. We can come over here to our app, our views and our pages and our homepage. And this is pretty much the only place we need to be at. First thing we need to do uh, over here, if we, let me just move this over so we can see more. Uh, if we come over here, we should be able to see the uh, low latency, if we click on this. Inside of the low latency, we should be able to see the player SDK for web. Let's go ahead and let's click on that. And then from here, we should have like a getting started page. Uh, there's also video JS integration, which we've done before for videos themselves. But if you want to use that, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but once we're here, I'll have a link to all these pages in the video description. I want to copy this first line and we just want to include this script tag on our homepage. Once we have that, we can then go ahead and create our player. So we're just going to come down here. We'll do a div with an ID equal to Amazon, Amazon dash IVS, uh, something like that. Go ahead and close our div. And then down here, we'll go ahead and do a script tag as well. Oops, a, uh, my Emmet's not working. So we'll just do a script and then we can work from here. So treating this a bit like a Vue.js application where we just have everything in one file, uh, that's fine. But for the uh, IVS right here, we want to give this a video tag as well. Say video. And then in this video tag, we need to give it a couple options. Uh, the first one's gonna be the name of this this uh, div. So we're gonna say an ID equal to, I don't know, IVS-video maybe. Then we're just gonna come down here and we're gonna give this a set of controls. You can give it a max, or sorry, a style equal to max dash height. Let's go with 500 pixels by max dash width of 500 pixels. Just something to work with. Uh, we can also, if we want to optionally, I'm gonna move this up here, give this a autoplay. So we have autoplay controls. We can also do a plays in line uh, and that should be good for that. Then down here in our script, what we want to do is uh, tell it, hey, we have a URL. This URL is going to be uh, something that we need to grab from uh, our, our uh, IVS dashboard. I'm not quite sure what's going on with my script tags here or why none of this is being formatted. Oh, I see. Uh, it's because this copy button right here isn't copying the closing script tag. So let's come up here after the Amazon stuff. This is why I always love using Amazon solutions for things. Close the script tag, uh, and then we should be good to go. This should hopefully fix our formatting. So for our URL, we want to come back over to our dashboard where we have our channel, and we want to scroll down to our playback URL. We just want to copy that and paste it in here. This is something where if each individual user was creating their own channel, which you can do using the AWS SDK gem, I believe, 
uh, you would then want to uh, change this from being a hard-coded value to something you're grabbing from like the user's stream object or whatever. Uh, but we'll cover that in a future video. For now, we're just gonna hard code this to our playback URL. Once we have that, we can then come down here and because we're including this player live video, we can do a check for uh, IVS player dot is player supported. So if the player is supported and we can actually do this in a smarter way, uh, we could say if the player is not supported, we just want to, I don't know, like alert your browser does not support the uh, Amazon IVS or whatever. Uh, if the browser does support it, you can do that uh, in an else block or you could just keep continuing if you were to like return or something. We'll come down here. We can say for the player, uh, we want to call IVS player dot create, store that in a player object. Then we want to do a const video target is going to be equal to document dot get element by ID. This needs to be our video target. If we we're using a stimulus controller here, like someone with half a brain, uh, we'd just be able to grab it. But here we have to do our document dot get element by ID. Uh, because I decided to do this all in one page, but this kind of matches more what Amazon has in their documentation. Uh, so then after we do that, we can then call player.attachHTML video element to the video target. So we're attaching our IVS player to this video target. Then we need to load our URL, which we stored up here in this URL. Let's go ahead and load that. And finally, we should call play. And once we've done all of that, we can probably come over here save this, uh, come over to our Rails app, refresh, and you'll see just an empty video player here. Looks a little ugly, because as you can tell, I've just hard-coded some stuff, uh, but for a first attempt, this seems fine. Now let's take a look at how we can actually like stream to this. For that, we need to come back over to our dashboard, and we need to open up some kind of streaming software. In my case, I use uh, OBS, which is open sourced. It is the open broadcast software, free to use. You can look at the source code. If you don't trust me, you shouldn't trust me. I'm just some guy on the internet after all. I could be convincing you to download God knows what. Uh, but assuming you download it, install it, click on Windows or whatever your OS is, you can then come over here to OBS, go into File and Settings, and then you can come down to the Stream. Then for your server, you want to copy the uh, ingest server right here. Go ahead and paste that in. And then for the stream key, you can just click copy and then you can paste in that stream key right here. Click apply and then click OK. Once you've done this, you should then be good to start streaming, which will at the very least, hopefully, uh, connect you to the service. If you get disconnected repeatedly, I would suggest going into file settings and I want to say it's the video setting and you want to make sure your output is the is scaled to at least 1080p. In my case, I had this going out as 1440, as, which is the same as what I'm recording in. Uh, but because it's limited to 1080p, it kept disconnecting me. So you want to like downscale it if you're running into that issue. But OK, we're now streaming here. Let's go ahead and let's refresh this page. Uh, and then we should be good to go. We can see right here live. We are healthy. We have a 25 second duration. So I'm going to move OBS over to the side. And then if we come over here to our home page, if I refresh, you can now see we have this working. I could unmute this, but that would cause a horrendous feedback loop, loop that would deafen me, and I'm not looking for that. Uh, so we're just really going to uh, trust me when I say this is working. You can, of course, full screen this if you want to, exit full screen, and you can also pop this into picture in picture mode. And this is where I was talking about something before, where if we were to go over to slash posts, our picture in picture mode would disappear. If you wanted to do something a little bit cheeky, you could do something like a... Uh, so we could put this in something like a, I don't know, turbo frame tag, call this IVS player, and then do. And we can come down here and do an end and save this, refresh the page. So you'll see this is still working just like we would expect it to, right? Now let's come over here and instead of saying you can find me in the home, let's do a link to check out my posts. And then this will take us to the post path, which I think is what we called it. We can go ahead and save this. We'll refresh. Uh, we'll change this into picture in picture mode and we click on picture in picture. And if we click on uh, check out my posts, you'll see content missing. So an easy way to work around this is going to be to sort of separate out where your tags or where your turbo frame tags go. So I'm going to put all of this inside of one turbo frame tag, call this my video player. And then up here, I'm just going to leave the link to check out my posts and leave the turbo frame tag at the bottom. Let me go ahead and make sure this is muted. Click picture in picture. Now, if I click check out my posts, you'll see that I'm still playing the live stream, even while the user is creating stuff 
for the platform. So the entire time the user is doing this, they also have the ability to watch the live stream. Now, of course, they can't go back to the tab uh, as you're navigating it, but you at least have the option for them to, uh, to see what they're doing or what's going on while they're navigating your website. So there's, there's more to build on here. I just wanted to do this as a quick little intro view, show you what's possible. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this. If you do have some requests for what you'd like to see, maybe it's like individual chat rooms, similar to how Twitch does it, the chat functionality itself, uh, you know, streams, whatever, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to cover them in future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I will see you in the next one.